In between Christmas and New Year's this year, I had a little bit of downtime, and I wanted to make myself a nutcracker. I've made these for friends and family in the past, but I didn't have one. Very much so a cobbler's kid's go shoeless situation. Uh, the nutcracker itself is made out of 17.4 pH stainless in the H900 condition. That's going to be about 40 Rockwell. It gives you a nice spring temper. Uh, it looks good. Holds up well. And uh, it it's pleasant material to work with comparatively. So I had a little left over from a recent job. And I uh, had to augment my old design a little to fit the smaller piece of stock. But uh, it, it worked pretty well. Still, still have enough leverage on the handle to crack nuts. So we're going to do this in the Haas mill, and we'll do it in two operations. Uh, first one in roughing jaws, and then the second one in soft jaws. So the Haas isn't ideal for 3D contour finishes like this, and you'll see that in one area, but we, we have a good workaround, and we can, we can make this machine do what we need it to do for this project. A lot of people think I speak negatively of it, but... You know, I, I really like the machine, and I'd probably own another one at some point in my life. So we'll start out by drilling the holes of the flexure slot, and then we'll rough everything with quarter-inch end mill, and then we'll use that quarter-inch end mill to poke a hole and bore it through the, the grip stock. And we're going to use that to locate our second operation. Then we'll 3D finish the tops, finish the side, and then the last thing we'll do in the first stop is cut in the flexure slots. And we're going to use a feed mill and a thin wall approach to do that. So here we are roughing. And, uh, and we're not getting too crazy here. Uh, I kind of treat this machine like a 3D printer. I want just a stable, reliable process I can walk away from. So this is the 3D finishing. Uh, we're using a 3 millimeter ball mill to do everything. And as you can see, it looks pretty good, but... Right there in the middle where the screw reverses as it makes its parallel finish, there is a little bit of a ripple because the Haas doesn't have a tension Z-axis screw. So you do get a little bit of a witness line. So if we reverse, when we reverse and do the second operation, if we make 90 degree passes in the Y-axis, it might get rid of that. And we're going to try it. Now we are finishing the outside. And I really try to get as good of a finish as possible on projects like these because I'm going to polish it later. And the tighter finish we can get now, it saves us a lot of time polishing. So we'll be able to start at 320 grit on this, and that's a tremendous savings. So here is the flexure cutout. And we are roughing, leaving a little bit of wall stock, and then finishing the wall. And then we move down an increment and do that all over again. And... Sometimes when you do thin wall stuff like this, the approach is to do each side of the wall as you move down. Uh, but with this particular part, it really ballooned the amount of time spent rapiding. So I just kept the tool down and finished each slot all the way, top to bottom. And it still worked fine. Um, there's enough material in the walls to make sure that nothing's going to vibrate until you get to the floor. This is the actual tool. It's two millimeters wide, 20 millimeters long, and it's got a, a healthy corner radius on the bottom, so we could treat it like a feed mill. This would go a lot quicker in my other machine, but I'm topped out on spindle speed in the Haas. So it just uh, kind of took its time and chewed down through. This is the second operation. We're using that hole, as previously shown, to locate the work. These are soft jaws. If you're unfamiliar, it's just an aluminum jaw that you cut the profile of the part in to hold it. It uh, holds it securely and it doesn't mar the nice finish we've established. So we'll rough everything away but a thin web of material in the middle. And that's just to keep the, the part from flexing around until we're ready for it to be finished. And then we'll finish the, the fillets in the top and then remove that middle and finish the fillets. And then the very last thing we'll do is take out the little web of material in the middle and then it will be fully flexible. So the the roughing again we're we're taking it pretty easy. We'll locate it and what I did with these jaws is when you cut soft jaws you stick a spacer block in there and it was inch and a quarter but I added a five tenth shim and then when I clamped the part I left the spacer block in but removed the shim. So there's only five tenths of preload on the part, 
and the spacer block keeps the vise from overly crushing it because it, it's a delicate enough part that can very easily happen. So there's the 90 degree finishing in the Y axis. And then this is a scissor jack we printed up on the uh, Benchtop FDM printer. This is going to go in between the handles because I'm concerned when we cut out this middle, oh, there's the 90 degree floor finish. It looks much better. But I'm concerned when we cut out this handle, it can spring inward with nothing, nothing being in the middle there. Uh, something like this. So I wanted something to prevent that from happening and this little scissor jack should do. It'll just kind of press in between the handles. It's kind of a tight fit already. It doesn't really need to travel much. And then we'll lock it up and that should give us a little extra layer of security. To me this is the ideal application of like cheap FDM printers making disposable things to help you with products and projects. We'll rough that out and we'll also rough machine the fillets with this end mill. And then so after this we can we can finish cut the inside of the handles fillets and then remove that little web of material and then the, prop, the nutcracker will be fully flex flexible. little web out in the middle and that's the last operation. Here it is coming out of the vise and as you can see it actually springs open so my fears were unfounded but it's really satisfying to take it out of the vise and be fully flexible. So now we're going to do some polishing out of the machine. It's very very good finishes. You don't see any machine marks but it does have some cusping on those fillets. So we're going to use the NSK belt grinder and a 320 grit belt. And the nice thing about this is how much you can contour the belt to the part. And so that really is a nice way to smooth over fillets quickly. And because we're using such a fine grit belt to start, it's not going to change geometry much. It's really just going to capture those high spots and rub them off. So it's, it's a very nice way to finish parts quickly. I bet we had less than a half hour in doing the bench work on this. So the belt grinder was kind of a, I don't know, kind of a luxury thing to purchase. It's pretty expensive, but I, I use it often, and I'm I'm really glad I have it. So now we're going to polish the top. Here's a little toolmaker's trick. If your part's slipping around on the bench, squirt whatever fluid you have on the bench and then on top of your towel. And uh, it should stay put a little better. You can use rubber mats or whatever, but I like to use disposable towels so I don't get grit contamination. Like after the 320 grit, I'll throw it away and then move to 500 grit. Uh, but as you can see, we are polishing the, the top faces and I'm going kind of in a crosshatch angle pattern. You don't want to do straight lines. 
that prevents patterns from forming, prevents grit from kind of digging ditches. You, you just want to kind of keep everything randomized and you'll get a much more consistent finish much more quickly. So that's that center spot where the screw reversed. It was better on the back side where we did the y-axis direction finish, um, but there's still a little bit of something there, um, but cleaned up much quicker than the, the front side. Now we're on 500 grit, still doing the cross hatch. After we get rid of all the 320 uh, lines, we'll, we'll go through and straight grain this just by dragging the paper straight across Here's the straight graining, and that gives you just a really, really nice finished look. Uh, it'll be kind of a matte look. You'll see, you see something like this on cookware a lot. I didn't want to go with a polished finish because, frankly, it's just not going to survive. It'll be stored in a drawer somewhere in the kitchen. It'll get washed in the sink. It 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 just it would get beat up too quickly. So uh, a brushed finish is always nice on something like this using that scissor jack earlier just so I have have a little more firmness under so I can press down. When you're when you're doing paper, even stone finishing like this, you really don't need to be pressing much. Um, if you really bear down on it, you can actually kind of create deep scratches. And that's not what we're looking to do. We're just looking to remove the the peaks of the the feed lines or the, the previous paper finish. So light touch So there's the finished product again. I really enjoyed making these. Um, it's it's just really satisfying to play with. People find the flexor really interesting. So if you have some material lying around, give it a shot. They're they're kind of a fun project, and uh, they're just really really neat. So play with flexors, make nutcrackers. Have a good year.